What's up, everybody? Got myself another Smith base here to custom paint. Let's see what we can do. I use the 220 just to kind of do a quick rundown, get rid of some of the old paint. I'm not really taking all the paint off because the paint is sticking good. It's not flaking, it's not chipped off. And because it's 220, I will cut through and get down to some of the bare wood. Not a big deal. Make sure it's all pretty even looking. When it comes to some of these edges, like right here, just try to keep it flat. I'm not trying to round anything off. I want to keep the wood like it is. I'm using a rattle can primer. And all I'm really doing is just spray it over top of the raw wood. That raw wood is pretty much a sponge for any kind of material, so I'm just trying to seal it up. And right here I got a reaction from a old chip repair. That's something I gotta deal with now. Great. So I let the primer cure, scuff it up, put it back in the booth, and knock that little bubble edge down a little bit before I go ahead and put the sealer on. Normally I would just put this on a stick and have it off to the side and spray it. But because I am um, putting a flake on it, I wanna make sure the consistency is the same, so I'm kind of just back taping it on there. And when you're mixing flake, you kind of got to go ahead and spray it as soon as you put it on the gun. You let that gun sit on the shelf for a little while, that flake will just sit there and sink to the bottom. And I'm not using a filter into the gun because all that flake will get trapped in the filter. After I finished flaking the job and let it sit for a day, the customer came out and picked it up and wanted to cut out some larger pickup holes for it. So he took it on home, cut them out. And when I got it, I went ahead and taped them on up and continued with the job. Now being that I have a coat of clear on top of the flake, I'm able to sand it down with some 500 grit, hit it with some gray scotch bright. I'm trying to dull it all out. I don't want to have any kind of shine to it. Because when I put this tape right here on it, if there's any kind of shine, high lows, it's not going to stick that well. I'll, I'll tape it off like I'm doing right here, come back about 15 minutes, and it'll start just peeling apart. So basically, prepping is very important in any kind of job, especially this. All right, now when it comes to candy coats, that heavy flake that I sprayed for the whole body, that's my base for everything else I'm doing. So now what I'm doing, I'm, I'm basically tinting one area of that silver blue and another area a darker blue. Still having the flake through the whole thing, it's just gonna be a light coating on top to see through it. Transfer tape is good for large flat surfaces. It's not worth a damn when it comes to curved edges. So after I do the larger flat areas, I have to kind of double tape around the edges and make it all work. At this point, I'm like, huh, that uh, darker candy blue is not really showing up too dark, so just took it back and added a little more red to it to kind of give it a deeper purplish blue. And right, the, right away, I'm like, yeah, that's better. And now when I'm getting ready to spray it, I'm looking at the transfer paper to make sure I'm using it as a guide, make sure it's covered just as evenly. 
because blue on top of another blue, I'm not sure if I've actually got it covered well. So I'm double checking everything. The guide, hitting with a light to make sure. And when I was laying this flame down, I was kind of thinking about thickness of the pinstripe. And I thought, well, the guy's up on stage and everything, and he needs to be seen from a distance. So I went with a thicker pinstripe just so it could be seen against the blues. Because if I didn't, that thinner pinstripe would have just been absorbed from a distance and you would have never seen it. Now the second set of clears I'm putting on is just really protecting my artwork and kind of smoothing it out. So I'm hitting it again with 500 grit. I'm knocking down the edges. Now you can see right here where it's kind of shiny and then it's kind of a weird speckly dull shiny. I gotta make sure all that's kind of the same dullness. And wherever it's shiny, that means that's lower and where it's dull, it's higher. So I'm literally shaving the upper layers off and going lower and lower. Now right here, I went ahead and back taped it again on the neck. You can see that's the original wood underneath. I'll sand it down, smooth it out, do a light dusting of black so it fades into the fretboard. Now after it's all been cleared, I'll go ahead and let it sit. And when it gets thumb tacky, where it's not pulling off tape, where it's got strings of clear coming off, I'll peel off that center section and let whatever clear is still curing lightly just fold around the corner so it won't have a sharp edge. And you can see the way I just went ahead and the fade of the black goes right into the color there and the clear just kind of fades around the front and just there's no edge it's nice and smooth and at the very end I know it's at the end but just don't yank that tape off you gotta pull it down and away from your artwork There you go, another base job done. Tell me what you think. All right, see you all next time.